Hi friends and welcome back to Blue Moon Home and Garden. Today I'm out here in the chicken run. This is the big coop behind me and the little coop is over here. We're going to be doing some big spring chores in here. In, in the winter time I put up tarps and plastic and things like that to keep the wind and the rain off the chickens when they're out here in the run. We even make their run a little smaller so that if they want to come out they can. If they don't want to they don't have to. They won't walk in the snow and I don't cover the entire run. It's quite a large run and so I only cover part of the run and then I put tarps along there as well. You'll see that in just a minute. So after the winter time throughout that season of the wind blowing and the heavy snow, things don't look very well. Everything looks a little worse for wear and I just want to get it all down and get it cleaned up out here. Also today, if you remember last year, we built a new coop for uh, broody hens and chickens or a sick chicken and we put the baby chicks that were hatched in August in there. And over the winter time, when it got really cold, I was able to coerce them into the big, big, big shed behind me, and they were nice and warm with all the other chickens. Well, now three of those little hens have gone broody themselves, and we are at about 14 to 15 days of them being broody. So in the next week or so, they're going to start hatching eggs. So. If you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me over there. I always post the, the chicken pictures over there a lot. So I want to get them out of there because when you have babies hatching, the other hens are not always kind and they will hurt them or kill them. So I'm going to get those three hens out of there and get them over into the little coop. And so I have a lot of work today. I'm going to take you around and show you everything that needs to get done. It's just a disaster out here. And I just want to get things spruced up for the girls. The rain coming soon. So I'm going to jump in and get started. To our run. Our run ha actually has two openings. So here's the first one. This one comes off the barn. And this is where I go in and feed them. And this is the side that we keep completely covered. It has a roof. And we also have corrugated plastic along two of the sides. And then I have plastic on the door. And this is the direction that most of the wind comes from in the winter time. And so this is where I seal off and keep it the warmest and the driest. Walking into the run, you'll see on the opposite wall, I have some tarps hanging up. And so this makes the run rather small, but it's about 16 feet by about 19 feet. So for them to hang out in the winter time. And this is where I keep their food. We have two pans and their water usually sits over here. I have this one, which we're not using because it freezes up, but I've already moved their water over to the other side. So over here, through the opening, you can see I've lost a tarp over there, but there was a tarp there blocking the wind and a tarp over here blocking the wind and then here is their water now, which the duck just took a bath in, so I have to dump that and clean it out. And then I'm slowly going to turn you around, so you can see the rest of the run. This is the small run, and you can see part of the coop. Um, this shade here has fallen and ripped. And uh, that has to come down. But that kept the snow off the ground over here. Like I said, my chickens will not walk in the snow. And then over here, we have a ladder for them to play on. And then over here, we have the rest of the run. And here's Henrietta just voicing her opinion. Because I'm out here, she knows I'm going to do something. She's not quite sure what I'm going to do. So she's just telling me all about it. What's the matter, Henrietta? What's the matter? Over here, there was a piece of the old coop that we had and it got left out here last year. There are a lot of branches and debris on the ground. There's a pan that was buried in the snow. So, yep, I just want to get out here and get all these tarps down and get it cleaned up. So, let's go. So, as I mentioned, in the roof of the run, I have these skylights. 
And because they're the corrugated plastic, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can darken you down a little bit. You can see here that the dust and the leaves have accumulated in these wavy parts. Because of that, even though we've sealed in here, it still leaks. We had rain, you can see over by the door where the rain went downhill, it's kind of wet in here. So I'm gonna get the plastic off the door and the tarps off of this side and let that wind blow through and dry that out. and easy to store. They do get expensive when you have to replace them every year because they just get so brittle and torn by the wind. And they're so dark and chickens really need a lot of light in the winter time. So the goal is to continue with the corrugated plastic around this part. Now I'm just ready to take this sunshade down. And like I said, it does protect the run from snow. You can see here at the top, it has ripped and it's gotten stuck on the roof so it's going to be challenging to get down but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to release this strap and get that part down and then I'll be able to move over to the other side and get it over the top of the fence and hopefully get it off. Somehow I missed pulling that off, but it's off and it looks so much better. Now I'm ready to take off the plastic. I was kind of thinking to leave it on because the baby chicks will be out there, but it should be plenty warm enough by the time they are old enough to go out there. So I went ahead and took it off because it just looks so much better and so much cleaner without that being there. I just need to remove this one last post here. This is here to help hold up the roof of the shade to keep it higher than the roof of the coop. And it requires a different driver head to get that screw out. It's a like a flower shaped. And so we made a promise to ourselves this year that we would definitely start buying all the same screw so we don't have to change the driver head out so many times to get the screw out. The bedding I use in my coop is the large flake from Tractor Supply. And when I clean the coop, I take out the wet and the dirty 
shavings, but then there's a lot of shavings that aren't necessarily dirty, but they're not necessarily clean either. And when I want the coop clean, I want it really clean. I want to scrub it out. So all that bedding has to go out. And so what I do is I take the dirty bedding out and I take it to the compost pile. But the rest of the shavings, I just scrape out the back door and the chickens love it because it's new to them and it just gives them something to scratch through and look for things. So it's a, a boredom buster, if you will. Now I'm getting ready to move my broody hens. So I'm going to go ahead and put fresh bedding into the little coop and get it ready to bring their eggs and the chickens over. So I'm going to show you exactly how I do that when I move the chickens over. Prissy and she has seemed to leave her nest that she was nesting on and she had quite a collection of eggs. She was hoarding a lot and here is Peep and she is on her nest and then finally we have little Miss Petunia and she is on the floor of all places and so we're going to show you how I do it. Now I have this box that I've put some nesting material into to build like a little nest to soften the eggs just so that they have a safe ride and then I'm just going to gently coax her off her nest. Now a lot of chickens can be pretty nasty when they're broody. She's really calm in her temperament so she doesn't want to leave obviously. She's She's just not having it, but she is not biting me, and you'll see uh, how Pete responds to her getting moved. So I've got her off her eggs, and here she is. She actually stole three duck eggs. Now, I have news for her. Those duck eggs are not going to hatch. So when you pick up an egg from a broody hen, you don't rotate it. You don't change it. You pick it up exactly as it was in the nest. Look at her stealing her eggs back. Isn't she adorable? But anyway, you don't rotate it. You don't turn it over because as the egg de develops, the embryo, it she will turn it so many times to make sure that it develops correctly and it's getting the right amount of moisture and the right amount of heat. And if you change that, that's going to throw off her, her cycle. She knows exactly what she's doing. So it's really important not to change the egg any way at all. Just lift it straight up and put it straight back down exactly as it was. Now I'm going to move those duck eggs with her because she will stop laying completely if I change too many things. So I'm moving the eggs with her. And I stepped away from the little coop, and of course everybody is curious as to what's going on. Now I have her eggs right in the nesting box, and I'm just going to set her in there as well. And she's going to just take a look around and settle in, watch and see how she does. Now we're back in the coop and I'm excited to get these girls moved so we can finally get these spring cleaning done to these nesting boxes and get them rebuilt. Here we are with Peep. I brought the box back in and now we're going to try to convince her to move off her nest. And it's not an easy thing to convince a broody mama to get off her nest. She is really upset with me and she's really 
telling me that no, she doesn't want to get off this nest and she doesn't want me to touch her eggs. But I'm going to just gently lift her out and here she is. She's ready to come out and I'm going to set her off to the side while I go ahead and take a look at what is under her. And she has a lot of eggs under her. Now, if you see some dirty eggs, don't worry about that. That happens. It, it's just part of the hatching process and you don't want to wash them. Like I said, you're just going to take them out and arrange them exactly as they were inside the nest. And so just to continue that as you're carrying them and putting them into the new nest. The thing chickens will do is they'll cast aside any eggs that they feel are not healthy enough or maturing correctly. And so I was just feeling around to feel if any of those eggs were warm where she was sitting on them. And if they're not, they're cold, then she doesn't need to take them. But here she is, she's right here watching my every move and she's not going to let me get away with anything. I'm also now back at the other coop giving her Petunia some eggs of her own, a couple more because we know those duck eggs are not going to hatch. So these eggs were warm and I figure they're probably viable so we're going to just put them under her and I'm arranging the eggs of Peep into her spot and then we're just going to put Peep in and let her get settled as well. more chores that I have in the run. I'm going to get them some food and water, change out the chickens water, and get more water out for the other chickens. They do tend to drink a whole lot more in the summertime, so I like to put out a lot more water for them. I raked it up they came and spread it all out and then over here at the door they spread that out too so I need to re-rake and clean that up pile over here at the entrance to get out and we just put down we dug out a little bit more here and put down some absorbent fibers there to so now you can see you can see all the way across the run this is all open, all the way around. And over here at the other coop, it's all clean and ready to go. This pan is washed and I'm gonna use that for food for the girls over in the nursery coop is what we're gonna call it. And then um, I do have a couple more things to do. I need to fix their door. And then this is a piece of insulation that's wrapped that I put over their door to keep the cold out. And then I use this stick to pry against the handle because even though our run is pretty high, we'll deal with coons getting in. And even though there's a lock, coons are pretty clever. So I want to be sure that they're not getting in our coop. Well, we're going to call this a wrap before we get drenched by the rain. 
But I just want to say thank you so much, everyone who watched and came along today. Please let me know in the comments, what do you like to do for your chickens in the spring? What are some of your cleanup chores after the long winter? I am so glad we were able to get out here today and get those tarps down and get it cleaned up. It's so rewarding and so satisfying to make a clean space for the chickens. And I hope you enjoyed my tips on moving broody hens. If you have additional tips, by all means, please, the community would love to read them. So put them down in the comments to tell us how you move your broody hens when you have to. Now they're in a safe place and when their babies are born no one's going to hurt them and as they grow they have room in the coop and underneath the coop and around the coop that little run that we have there for them. It is awesome. Please stay tuned for upcoming videos when we work on the door we rebuild the uh, nesting boxes and the work around the bottom of the coop. We did have a new coop big coop planned this year but with another big project coming in we did have to put that back in the back burner and you know sometimes it happens so we're just going to have to put a little more time and a little more money into this coop and make it last for another year and that's okay sometimes it happens on the homestead you have plans and you have projects and then sometimes another project comes along and you just make do and it's okay it's still progress you're still moving forward don't forget that Thanks so much again, guys. Please like the video. Please share it. It helps our channel to grow, and we do appreciate all of you. So be blessed, be safe, and we'll see you next time.